It's Jordan Mulligan from the Mulliganverse, and today's video is with Aldo Kane talking about working on the oil rigs, something I did not know he did. Um, before I read his book, I had no clue that he'd, he'd done this, and it led to him abseiling to volcanoes. So it, there was some crossover, and for me, sometimes in life, you will be doing something, whether it's a job, a mundane task, something at school, and then in like 10 years from now, it'll become super relevant. And that's, for me, what this story is. Like, it's a really interesting story how this led on to so much more for Aldo Kane. Today's video is sponsored by audible.com where you can get Aldo Kane's book for free. This is how I got my book of Aldo Kane. The link is in the description. They are giving away a free copy of Aldo's book. Thank you so much to audible.com for making this possible. And thank you to the everyday stoic, the best stoicism, clothing and apparel for sponsoring this video as well. Link in the description where you can buy the stoic t-shirts. Before that, let's jump into this amazing video with Aldo Kane talking about how he got into basically abseiling into volcanoes. Yeah, so I worked offshore on the oil rigs for three years. Um, so I left the Marines and then I kind of messed around for a little bit and then, and then I went into, um, into the offshore industry. And there's a lot of hard men and women, um, you know, who work in the offshore oil and gas industry. And um, it's, you know, for me, for me, I used it as a, as a platform to have time off. So by this time, I've already been to Iraq. I've already been fighting in war. I've already realized that time is more valuable than money. I've realized that, you know, you can earn as much money as you want. You know, it comes and goes daily, monthly, weekly, whatever. You know, when you're up, you're eventually going to be back down. Um, but time doesn't, that's just gone. Um, and you know, if you are privileged enough to get to old age, um, then then that's one of the best things that, that can you know physically happen to you. Um, and so, so for me, when I went offshore, it was very much about using you know I was sacrificing two weeks of my life, which is huge um, when you think about it, um, to then have two or three weeks off which I could then use effectively into reshaping, retraining and, and regrouping on what I valued and what I felt was important and which direction I wanted to go in life. Um, and when you're offshore, it gives you opportunity to reflect because there's a lot of time when you're not working um, and it gives you a lot of time to reflect and to, to plan. If, if you're of that mindset, there's also you could easily blink and you've done 20 years in the offshore industry, which means you've spent 10 years on an oil rig, uh, which to me was, you know, it's not what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I wanted to use it as a leg up to then use the time to eventually get the qualifications and the experience that I needed to do the job that I do now. And when you look back, when I look back, like the, the, the dots join perfectly, mm. like it's, it's 2020 perfect. It's crazy, right? Look, like looking back, because uh, especially sometimes in the moment, it can be quite scary and daunting. Like, is this it? And but it, it it somehow finds its way to work out right. Yeah, I think if you, I think the big one of the big things that I, I think that people are anxious about is fear of the unknown and thinking, is this it? Is this all I've got? Is this what I'm doing with my life? If you're lucky enough to be that. Um, introspective and thinking about yourself and your life because most people are too busy with the minutia of everyday life that they don't give tomorrow and the next week and the next month a second thought. Um, it's quite deep this, but, but effectively, if you're in that position to think about the future, then you're one of the minority and then if, if you're able to think about the future and shape it, then, then you're in the top one, two, three percent of people on earth. Um, and that is it's quite a powerful place to be. I've never thought of it like that. That's it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I've ne I honestly never thought of it like that. So yeah, be, like being stuck at a certain point was the door-to-door uh, -door gas, is it gas and energy? Yeah. So I used to do, I, I was a double glazing door knocker. I, it was the worst job I ever had. It was really tough as well. I remember thinking like, this cannot be it. So at that moment in time, first, where does the dot connect for you? And yeah. also, what, what was that experience like? That was, so I ended up, uh, I was selling gas and electricity. It was a really horrible time. You know, I'd left the Marines. And I didn't leave the Marines because it had ran its course or anything. I left the Marines because I was like at the top of my game. And it's the hardest, the easiest thing to do for me would have been to stay in and see out my 22 years. That was easy. 
the hard thing to do is leave something when you're very good at it because you you know it's completely unknown it's very easy to stay in that one in that rut and I didn't want to be in that rut you know I'd, I'd done as much as I thought I could do in the military I'd gained as much experience I just knew there was something niggling me that there was something that I wanted to do uh, that was it was um, I don't know that there was just something that was niggling at me that made me want to sort of put my notes in and leave um, I then had this transition period of coming from being one of the most elite fighting soldiers on the planet to no one to just not having any backup you know I was I was just this guy who was out in the pot with everyone else looking for work um, and so I, I took on this job of being a gas and electricity salesman and it's you know I'm not a salesman and and it, it, it just felt like it was a job for the sake of a job and it was it, it wasn't that the people that I was working with weren't that nice you know they were I, I don't know if you found that as well yeah I did but they, they like sales and and that's it just didn't sit right with me and they didn't care about the people and not at all yeah and so I did that for two or three months and I you know it was utterly soul destroying but at that point I still hadn't connected the dots with you know I just decided that I wanted to join the Marines, I decided I wanted to be a sniper, I decided that I wanted to be in recce. I did all these things, but I hadn't really fully grasped that everything was in my control. I kind of felt at that point, I was just like, what am I doing? I'm just getting sort of smashed around here by, by everyone else. Um, and it was that classic, if you don't have a plan, you become part of someone else's. And that's exactly what was happening. So I, I took a big sort of um, fuck to myself and I no, probably shouldn't swear. Took a big, uh, I took a big sort of like, you know, I took myself off and had a word with myself um, about what it was and where I was going, which is why in the book I talk about acres of diamonds and it's an old fable about, um, you know, everyone's looking outwards and at everything they can go and get and have. And, and actually what I needed to do was look at what I was good at, what skills I had and what I could then offer as a service, um, you know, to, to, you know, by becoming valuable to people in industry, um, you know, that's, that's the way you become successful. So I, I sort of started to look, what do I know how to do? What can I do? Um, so I dodged around a bit doing the gas and electricity salesman, had a word with myself and then got into doing the ropes. You know, I already had a good background in rope work and that's how I got offshore. And I did three years offshore. The, the fable itself is of a ma Will you explain the fable? Yeah, of Acres of Diamonds. Yeah, it, um, yeah I'll pro hopefully get it right. But it's about a farmer who, um, who's you know looking to find diamonds. He's got a stretch of land and he's essentially thinks he's exhausted it, sells it, moves on. And the next guy who comes in, you know, digs and just spends hard work, hard graft, and he finds this rich seam of diamonds in his own backyard. And that's essentially what that's about is that you know we we often look you know as a human race we're looking at what's next and you know adventurous spirit and let's go outside let's go here let's go there and we're looking and chasing this thing which is never there and um and and essentially what it means is like for me was look at what you've got look at what you're good at and how can you turn that into service to then help other people Thank you Aldo for sharing that story with us. His book is amazing, I do fully recommend it. And luckily enough, audible.com have sponsored the video and you can get a free copy of Aldo Kane's book by clicking the link in the description. Um, and yeah, it's free, so go check that out. Thank you to audible.com. Also, thank you so much to theeverydaystoic.com where you can now buy the Stoic t-shirt and many more of the Amor Fatty t-shirts, uh, Memento Mori, all linked down below, the best stoicism apparel range online so go check that out um thanks for the support guys thank you for everybody who's come over to at jordan mulligan river on instagram and said hello have a blessed and productive day and i'll see you in the next one